Hello, party people. It's Will Pemble. HeliGuyO2 sent me an email the other day, and they asked how we go about putting together PVC roller coaster track. Now, it's been a couple of years since I built a PVC track, but what I figured I would do is take you into the shop, and I can show you exactly how I would build the perfect PVC track if I had it to do all over again. It's been a while since I've made any PVC roller coaster track, but I have a reason why I want to get back into it. So first let's start with the kind of PVC that we use. One and a half inch Schedule 40 PVC. The difference between Schedule 40 PVC and Schedule 80 PVC, the gray stuff, is the walls of the gray stuff are a little bit thicker and it's also resistant to UV light. But I've done a lot of research about this stuff and a way to make this resistant to UV light is to paint it. You can paint it with something clear if you want it to be white, or you can paint it with any other kind of spray paint. You just stop the sunlight from getting through, put sunscreen on the thing, that'll work just fine. The track that I'm gonna make today is, I, just, I have these little scraps of PVC. What I'm gonna do is use these two little scraps of PVC to make myself a two foot section of roller coaster track. It's gonna be 18 inches wide from like from one rail to another is going to be 18 inches i'm going to use these two two by four scraps as my ties and i'm going to put the ties 18 inches apart the pvc tracks that i've made in the past the way i've done it is i've taken a two by four and then i just screw a piece of pvc into the side of the two by four just like that but if you look at it you'll see that not very much surface area of the pvc actually touches the two by four what that results in is a weaker structure and also the screws that we use to screw the PVC into the rails, that becomes the thing that holds it all together. And what we discovered when we took the original coaster apart was there was a whole lot of shearing force that broke those screws, a lot higher failure rate than anybody would be comfortable with. So I wanna do it a little bit different this time. just did is I took a 1 and 7 eighths inch diameter hole saw and I just put a little divot, a little cove in the end of my tie here. Check it out. It ends up that the PVC, every single bit of possible PVC that can touch the rail, now touches the rail. When we screw into this, the PVC and the wood are going to hold each other together just as much as the screws. And so we're going to get less shearing and it looks beautiful. Now I'm going to figure out the rest of my measurements. How, why do I have to cut these in the first place and take into account the divot that I'm going to put in them so that my gauge of the track still ends up being 18 inches. If John Elliott was here, he could just like do the math and tell us how it's all going to work out. I'm not that smart, so I have to kind of piece it all together to make sense of it. This just me. So one and a half inches to the end. That's three inches, 18. So each of my boards needs to start out 15 inches long. And then I can put my little coves in. When I bolt my track on, it'll be an 18 inch gauge track. So now I have my two amazingly well-built ties. A couple of things I figured out along the way. If I was going to make a bunch of bunch of these, and I might, I would build a little bit better jig so that it was easier to get these things fitted in here. And if I could go back in time and get myself a drill press with, I don't know, more than 2.5 inches of travel, I might invest a little extra money in that. But this is what I got, so that's how I'm going to deal with it. And that's kind of what it's going to end up looking like. Very fancy, very predictable. It's going to look awesome over the long haul of the track. 
And I think what I want to do, just for this sample, is I want to have these ties 18 inches on center. Next step is to clamp the track together so that it stays where I put it. Each tie gets four screws. I use three and a half inch T25 deck screws because they're really long, they're really strong, and with a Torx bit instead of a Phillips head bit, they don't slip all over the place. T25, very cool. I like to drill a pilot hole and countersink the pilot hole into the rails so that everything is really, really smooth. Another thing that I like to do is I like to make sure that all my screws are along this way at 45 degrees so that when a wheel is rolling along here, it doesn't bump into the screw head. And when our guide wheels on the side are rolling along, they don't either. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I've built a lot of PVC track. This is the strongest and best piece of PVC track I've ever built. If I was gonna build another PVC roller coaster, this is exactly how I'd do it. I'd make sure that the rails are 18 inches on center, which means I start out with 15 inch long two by four ties. I use my one and seven eighths inch hole saw bit to cove the ends of the ties. I make sure that my screws go in at the 45 degree mark on the outside of the rails so that the wheels avoid the screws. And I'd use those three and a half inch T25 deck screws. That's using schedule 40, one and a half inch diameter PVC. That's how to do it. Who knows, maybe I'll make a lot more of it now that I've got this awesome method. Thank you for helping me bring physics, family, and fun to kids everywhere. I am Will Pemble. I'll see you soon.